A park ranger stands front-facing in uniform of a tan flat hat, gray shirt, and green trousers. The ranger stands in a large grassy field with a wooded area behind the ranger some distance away. With the ranger is a young boy dressed in a dark blue forage cap, dark blue union jacket with a single row of brass buttons buttoned down the front with a white canvas strap over his left shoulder attached to a wooden drum. Hello, my name is Will Wilson. I'm one of the park rangers here at Chickamauga and Chattanooga National Military Park. Here with me today is Miles Payne. Miles is a volunteer with us at the park and helps us do living history programs. Thanks, Miles, for helping us out today. We are located here at the site of the Widow Eliza Glens. Uh, this site was used by General William Stark Rosecrans for his headquarters on September the 19th, 1863. And today we'll be discussing a unique way of service for some soldiers during the American Civil War. A question for you is at what age do we consider no one no longer a child? In today's modern times, young people that are 18 years of age must sign up for the selective service. They can go ahead and volunteer for our nation's military. Would you consider them still a child? During the Civil War, the average age of the fighting soldier was between the ages of 18 and 39, with an average age just under 26. But to add to those figures, there were children serving for both the Union and Confederate armies that were as young as 10 in some cases. It was not uncommon for there to be young boys from ages 12 to 15 that served on battlefields across the country. In 1905, while researching statistics on common soldiers who served in the Confederate armies, Arthur Bell Irvin Wiley found that boys under the age of 18 constituted 5% of the Confederate fighting force. What were children of such a young age doing in the middle of such a terrible war? Why were they here? The answer is simple. Just like Miles here has this drum around his shoulder, those child soldiers served often as musicians, either as drummer boys, as fife players, or as buglers for the various regiments. Unlike today's modern military with sophisticated communication equipment, the Civil War battlefield was much different in terms of how commanders communicated orders to their troops. It was through the musicians with their drum beats and bugle tones that orders were given. There were two generic categories of military calls, also known as beats. The first, known as camp calls, were used at specific times of the day to summon soldiers to their duties. The other, skirmish calls, governed the movements and actions of the troops, both in drill and on the battlefield. Camp and skirmish calls could be played by bugle, fife, or drum. The Civil War battlefield was a very confusing place to be. The smoke produced from the black powder that was fired from the rifles, muskets, and cannons would obscure a battlefield. This is often referred to as the fog of war. And because of this fog obscuring a battlefield, the sound of drums and bugles could sound an advance or a retreat. Miles, can you play one of the drum beats that a drummer might, might play uh, to give an order from a commander to his troops? Miles' drum beat just signified for the regiment to commence firing. Now while drummers had specific duties to perform, they often were assigned to other duties in camp, such as runners, uh, for errands, for officers. These musicians again, often young boys, were not exempt from the horrors of battle. And after the fighting, they were often expected to help the medical personnel serving as assistants in makeshift field hospitals. There are accounts of drummers having to assist surgeons during battlefield amputations, trying to hold down patients. One other gruesome task, young drummers might be called upon to carry away severed limbs, all things that children of such a young age should not have been associated with. One mother wrote to her son, serving as a drummer boy, we heard of battles and we think perhaps your regiment may be engaged in some of them. And it cast a sadness over my feelings and my heart is filled with anxiety until I can, shall hear that you are safe. I know that you must have had a pretty hard time since you left, but all that I can do for you is to pray for you, that God would strengthen you and help you and give you courage to endure all that he in his providence shall call you to pass through. You may think because you do not hear from me after that I have forgotten you. No, your mother has not. I think of you in your long, weary marches, in your tents, or your lodgings on the ground. And I pray God 
that this dreadful war may soon be over, but he alone knows when it will be. All the men most want to know if I have heard from you. They think you have good pluck to go to war so young as you are. Do be careful of your health, as I fear you will ruin your constitution for life. Take care of yourself. Write as often as you can and try to improve in writing and composition, for your school days are gone. Good night, my dear boy. May heaven protect you. These words speak to the same feelings today as then that any parent or even grandparent has for the young ones they love. So as you visit battlefields such as Chickamauga or Shiloh or Antietam, please take some time to reflect on these hallowed grounds that so many, even some children gave to the causes for which they believe. Thank you for watching this program as we commemorate the 157th anniversary of the Battle of Chickamauga.